Hey, Algebra 2. We're going to go through the second half of our unit on um, exponential and logarithmic functions. Today we're going to talk about rational and irrational numbers. We've talked about these before, but now we're sort of looking at them in a different way. First of all, I, the curriculum wants me to explain how to use a number line to add these fractions, but I'm um, not going to do that. I hope you're okay with that. What I do want to say is 7 divided by 5 is a rational number, it's 1.4. 9 divided by 4 is another rational number, it's 2.25. Um, to add those up with a number line, eh, it's alright. I can also convert these to decimals and say 1.4 plus 2.25 equals, let's see, 5, 6, 3.56. Because these numbers have an ending, I can add them up very easily, right? Um, it's when we get into irrational numbers that we cannot add them accurately. These are rational numbers. No problem. I got it. Okay, the reason why we're looking at this is um, for things like, you know, how would I add pi plus, I don't know, even 3 Okay, pi is an irrational number. It doesn't have an ending. Um, 3 is rational. Pi plus 7 fifths. I have the same problem. Um, rational numbers in decimal form, you've rounded them somewhere. So you're not going to get an exact answer. And we really like exact answers in math. Square root of 2 is another irrational number. Um, if you look at log of 2, it's another irrational number. These are all numbers that, if I cannot write it, so I guess a definition of irrational numbers. If I cannot write the number as a fraction, it's irrational. If I can't write it as what's called p over q, okay, that is rational. If I cannot put it in a fraction form, it is irrational. Um, another important distinction, here I have a number in fractional form. If I change it into decimals, I get 0 0.11111 repeating. Um, if it repeats infinitely, it's okay. It is rational. On the other hand, square root of 2, let's do that one. I don't have, sorry. Square root of 2 is 1.4142135. And it continues on, but it doesn't repeat, so it's irrational. Log of 2, uh, 0.30102999957, it doesn't repeat, so it's irrational. Pi, um, Pi Day, we have a contest memorizing digits of pi um, because it's irrational. It doesn't repeat, it doesn't end, it doesn't terminate. Okay? Okay, let's talk again about pi. Pi is 3.14 and some more digits. Um, is that the exact value? No. We've definitely got more digits for pi. Can we write down the exact value? No. We will never be able to write down the exact value. There are computers, um, very powerful computers in very smart office spaces that are calculating pi and they still haven't gotten to the end of it. Um, but pi is somewhere between 3.14 and 3.15. Somewhere in between there is pi. Um, even if, if we had pi in a number line, there we are. It's somewhere in between here. Um, 3.14 and 3.15, these are what we call rational numbers. pi is somewhere in between them. 
Um, remember, we've done some over under estimates. So since pi, I'll write down a few more digits, 3.14159, um, we can say that pi is greater than 3.14, let's say it's greater than 3.14159, and it's less than 3.1416. Do I have the same digits there? Yeah, but I'm backwards. Yeah, it's less than, sorry, I've got the wrong digit there. 3.1415. I did not mes memorize enough digits of pi. So it's somewhere in between there. Um, and again, these are also rational numbers. Um, I can keep on expanding this more and more, just like we did when we had our lesson on numbers raised to irrational numbers. Um, but I'm, I'm going to move on, okay? So I know that I can do an over-under estimate to get closer to the value of pi, but um, let's see how we apply it. Just to move this back into logarithms, we've got lots of examples of irrational logarithms. Log 3 is irrational log 4 is irrational, um, I think log 25 is irrational, there's lots of irrational logarithms um, and that's what we're applying them to today. So let's look at this one. According to the calculator, log 4 is that really long number and log 5 is that really long number. Find an approximation of log 4 plus log 25 to one decimal place. That is to an accuracy of 10 to the negative 1. So if I want to find an accuracy to one decimal place, I'm going to look at two decimal places. And I'm not rounding these decimal places. I am cutting it off exactly where you see it, right? So um, if I look at log 4, log 4 is bigger than 0 0.60 and it is less than 0 0.61. And then log 25 is bigger than 1.39. Notice how I didn't round that, and I know it bothers me that we're not rounding that, but here is where I round it. So it's in between those two. So if I am finding an approximation of those two added together, I'm actually gonna add these together. So 9, 9.1 is less than log 4 plus log 25. Sorry, log 4 plus log 25 is greater than 1.99 and less than 2.01. Sorry, 1, 10, 2.01. So it's somewhere in between those two. Now, what I would do is add these two together and find the average of them, and I get log 4 plus log 25 equals 2.0. Okay, this rounds up to 2, that rounds down to 2, and we have our um, estimate. Let's try it a little bit longer, and we're going to take a few more numbers. Here I want an accuracy of 10 to the negative second. So, oh, I don't have those values. So if I go back to the last slide, the number I have for log 4 is 0 0.60205, that's more than enough numbers, and log 25 is 1.3, sorry, get an equal sign in there, 1.39794, that's more than enough numbers too. So now we're doing 10 to the negative 2. So I'm circling three numbers after the decimal point. And that's what I'm going to mess with. So 0 0.602 log, oh goodness, log 4, 0 0.603. And then 1.397 log 25, my handwriting, I'm sorry. Um, 
1.398. Add those together. I've got 999.1 is less than the sum of those two. Is sorry, yeah, is less is less than add these together. Um this should be an 8. 8 9 10 11 10 10 2. So now I can round. I can say that log 4 plus log 25 is 2.00. Okay, let's do it one more time. Times 10 to the 8th. Let me get those numbers in here, though. Hold on. All right. All right, now we want 10 to the 8th. Let me get some digits here. So if I want 10 to the 8th, how many digits do I need past the decimal point? 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That should work. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's my over under to estimate. So let's do zero point six zero two zero five nine 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 one. Less than log four. Less than one point. Nope. Sorry, 0 0.6020599992. And then we have log 25, 1.397. I have to line these up a little bit. 97397, lost track. 940008 is less than log. 25 is less than 1.39. It's really awesome if you, while you write these down, you keep them in line with the numbers above them. I failed at that. 1, 2, 3, 9. Okay, now we're adding them together. 9, 9, 9. Um, sorry. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. Goodness, 9. Nine, nine, nine. That's a lot of stinking nines. Is less than your sum. Is less than nine, ten, eleven. So I got eleven, ten, ten, ten. I guess ten. That's a ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, 10, I'm out of space, 2, phew, so we know that log 4 plus log 25 is approximately 2.1234567.8, now is when we round, okay, this ninth digit says that I round down, and all of these nines say that I round this up to eight digits, okay? That was a really long work, a lot of work though. Um, make a conjecture. Well, my conjecture is that it appears that log four plus log 25 equals two. Exactly. So my conjecture is that lots of that log four plus log twenty five is actually a rational number. That's my guess. Let's look at the log um, rhythm rule though. I know that log x plus log y equals log xy. Let's see if it works out. So log four plus log 25 equals log four times 25 which equals log of 100 and we know that 100 or 10 um, sorry, we know that log of 100 
is actually 2. 10 raised to the what power is um, 100. 10 raised to the second power is 2. Very, very exciting. A lot of work, right? Okay, let's try something a little more useful with it. So if we remember that the calculator um, gave us those irrational numbers for log 4 and log 25, um, let's find the value of log 4 times log 25 to three decimal places. Okay, we'll try a few of these. Um, the last few examples we were adding. Now let's see if multiplication holds true. So three decimal places means I want 4. This is log 4. And then log 25. Okay, multiply those. I'm not multiplying them by hand. That's a lot of decimals. So crunch it out. Okay, I've got 0 0.84. One five three five eight. It's less than zero point eight four one seven three five eight. That's odd. Nope. Hold on. Yep, they're different. Just checking. So log four times log five or twenty five. I want three decimal places. Looks like those are both rounding up 0 0.842. Okay, let's try five decimal places. You have to check your slide before. It's written on your paper. So if I want five decimal places, that means I want six up here. 602059. 0 0.602. 060 and then log 25 1.397940 1 1.397941 go ahead and multiply and start writing lots of numbers 84164 since we only need five decimal places i'm only writing down six. One, two, three, four, five. Six four one six four two is less than the mul the product is less than zero point eight four one six four four one two three. Okay, cool. I have enough. So that's what I'm rounding. That means I have log of four times log twenty five equals. Eight four one six four five decimal places. Does your conjecture well, actually that's on the next slide? Does your conjecture from the above discussion appear to hold true for multiplication? Um, no. So log four times log twenty five is not equal to log twenty nine log 4 times log 25 is not equal to log 100. Those are just general conjectures. Um, it, it doesn't hold true, okay, unfortunately. It holds true for addition but not multiplication. Um, so in closing, that's what we did today. We're learning that, um, I guess we're relearning that irrational numbers, you'll never get an exact answer. Um, irrational numbers don't always lead to rational answers. or irrational answers. You have to test them. Um, rounding 
gives an exact data. Okay, it lowers your accuracy.